Unemployment is expected to surge. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm working through my morning strain of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com.au. It's discussing, well, the treasurer's expectation that the jobless rate will rise. Or as I'd like to say, unemployment is going to surge. Now, right now, the unemployment rate is sitting, well, over 7%, about nearly, I think, 7.1 or 7.2. But this is based on the ABS data and the ABS methodology. There's some things there that a lot of people would think is just ludicrous with regards to unemployment, particularly how much work you need to do to be considered employed. And the problem is a lot of people get frustrated and just stop looking for work. So they're no longer in the workforce. They've lost hope. The problem with this is if you have a prolonged recession, there's scarring where people just give up. The worst thing as well is you've got all the job keeper people that aren't working in businesses that are essentially zombie companies and will probably go under. They're not counted as unemployed either. Now, when I started talking about unemployment in the economy, people were pointing me towards Roy Morgan because they have a different methodology. And if you look it up, Roy Morgan unemployment, you can see here they've got, you know, their um, methodology here, the unemployment methodology, and I'll let you go through this, just the differences between their approach and the Australian Bureau of Statistics approach. It's a different methodology, a different approach. Because remember, all of this economic information is measured in particular ways. They do surveys, they collect data, it's statistics. So depending on the methodology you use will affect the outcome and the data that you have. So we can see here, Roy Morgan have an unemployment rate and an underemployment rate. So let's scroll right down to the bottom to see what they're calling it right now. So they're saying our unemployment rate is at 14.8%. And underemployment is at 97 So they have this combined number here, which is 24.5%, which is, I think, the underutilization rate, the combination of unemployment and, un unemployment and underemployment as per the ABS. Now, if we go back here, we can compare... Where is it? Um, employment estimates, ABS versus Roy Morgan. And we've got here the work percentage of workforce employed, original and seasonally adjust, adjusted. This is the Roy Morgan. This is the ABS. And we'll scroll down. We can see here they have it. We'll scroll down. It's a long page. I don't know why they don't put the latest data at the top, but I guess they don't. You've got May at 14.8% of the percentage of workforce employed. And here they have 7.1%. Okay, or oh, unemployed, sorry, unemployed. So you can see the difference in the ABS, which is here, and the Roy Morgan. So the rule of thumb people were telling me is essentially double, double the ABS figures to get a rough understanding of what unemployment actually is. So whenever we read these articles in the news, warning us about unemployment rate rising or unemployment rate tip to, to hit 10% and stay there, You've got to remember this is just based on the ABS data, on this data here, not on the Roy Morgan methodology. Now, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've never been able to earn enough money in one hour working to live off, you know, for a pro prolonged period of time. I think the most I ever managed to charge a client was about 350 bucks. That was for like an you know, hourly rate, insane work with a tight time frame. You know, it happens occasionally as a professional. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm an architect. So lawyers, maybe, maybe, maybe you could just do one hour work a week and live off your, th your $500. But for most people, that's unreasonable. But that's one of the things that is considered employed. If you do one hour of work within the survey period, what do you think? Guys, let me know in the comments while I have a shot of coffee. Could you live off one hour a week? And if you're a trader and, you know, just get lucky or have your trade count, you've got to count all the research time you did for that too. It can't just be that five minutes you did the trade. That's cheating. So let's have a look at this article with that in mind. So the jobless rate is expected to rise. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg says he expects Australia's unemployment rate to rise given the economic challenges the nation faces. At least they're discussing it now. At least they're discussing it. We've been, well, worrying about this for some time, just the challenges that are facing the economy. Nothing seemed to stack up. Nothing seemed to stack up in the news or what people were saying. And, well, one advantage I have in being in the architecture industry, in some ways, we're the canary in the coal mine. 
we're the first to feel the brunt. You know? Honestly, in some regards, fees haven't recovered since the GFC, depending on what sector you're working in. I'd hate to have a practice that was dependent on the multi-res sector now, because that would take a hammering. There's, there's an office I drive past every now and then, and it's just an empty shell. The guy's left because, well, his whole firm was based on development sector. We're fortunate we seem to be in some weird niche of a multi, a mod, volumetric modular construction. So, you know, we've got a variety of um, sectors that we seem to work in. Not as glamorous as some of the others, although the, the building we're working on now is looking fantastic. Once once it gets uh, gets built, uh, with a new a 500 student school extension, I'll, I'll show you some pictures. But that's that's off topic. That's off topic. We experienced a similar thing back in the day when we were working on all the mining projects. That's where we got a lot of our volumetric modular skill. And it was just going gangbusters. Literally, we just started our business and Rachel had a contact and we started doing a little bit of work for them and it just blew up. It blew up. I ended up having four people working in a two bedroom Queenslander while we, sh we rented out uh, two rooms and we, Rachel Knight, converted the entry into another bedroom and we were just plowing through. You know, I was covering all the costs just on their concept submissions they were getting us to put in to try and win work because it was just going crazy. It was all the infrastructure work up in the, up in Queensland, all the coal mines. But then that slowed down, that slowed down and that sector got quiet. So then we had to get out there and branch out into other sectors. That's the challenge of small business. If ever you get too in bed with one sector, you always need to start getting out there and, and getting for more, particularly when you've got a team to keep, keep fed. So that's how, you know, that's my experience with a sector slowing and work, just you know, getting quiet and having to get out there and get more. So I can see how some people are in that situation now, but it's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of competition, you know, because right now we're in a recession, guys. Everyone's going to cop it. Then it was just one sector getting a little quiet. They were going from CapEx to operations. So speaking to reporters on Monday, Mr. Frydenberg said the national jobless rate was expected to rise. The official unemployment rate is 7.1% and the market is expecting for that to go a bit higher later this week, he said. The effective unemployment rate takes into account not only those who are officially unemployed, but also those who have left the labor force altogether, as well as those on zero hours. And that is around 13.3% right now. So the effective unemployment rate is much closer, much closer to what we're seeing here from Roy Morgan, what we're seeing from Roy Morgan at 14.8%. So that's what we should be talking about, the effective unemployment rate, shouldn't it? This is a large number of people reflecting the economic challenges that we see right now. Employment fell by 227,000 in May, adding to the almost 600,000 out of work in April. The Australian Bureau of Statistics on Thursday updated the official jobless rate Treasurer had previously estimated unemployment would reach 10% come June. And that's 10%, not the effective unemployment, the, act, the unemployment percentage. So it's going to be higher than that. Will we hit 20% effective unemployment? What's that going to do to the workforce? And this is the problem. This is the problem. There are all these articles about people not being able to find workers, but they're people on JobKeeper or JobSeeker getting the bonus that are just thinking, what's the point in looking? What's the point in looking? I can understand that. I can. I can. Maybe people are scared. Maybe they're in lockdown. Maybe they just think there's so many people out there looking for work. Why will I bother? I mean, the challenge is use this time to improve yourself. Use this time to get healthier. Use this time to learn new skills. You've got access to the internet now. You can train yourself in, in anything. Just don't sit on your ass and become lazy. If you get in that habit, that comfortable comfortable place of doing nothing that that can be pretty comfortable <laughs> that can be we've all enjoyed being a lazy bastard i mean come on it's great fun although after a while you tend to get sick of it i mean even if you're sitting there playing games start streaming get a twitch account you know get a twitch learn some skills learn how to edit you know, everything is an opportunity to learn We've seen a big reduction in hours worked in the months since the pandemic first hit in Australia, Frydenberg said. This is why we've announced the job seeker payment, which is legislated to end in September, which effectively doubles the safety net with the 450 a fortnight supplement. 
but also the JobKeeper program, which is effectively helping businesses pay their workers. Yep. It's due to update the Parliament on the future of both programs on July 23rd. So we'll have to see. It calls, of course, to extend these programs. To extend them. But the problem is, well, if JobSeeker is too generous, some people will have even less incentive to get out there and find work. Because, I mean... Working costs money, everyone. You need to have the right uniform. You need to, you've got travel costs, you've got childcare costs, then you've got eating out costs. I can understand how some people are better off with earning less, but are probably saving more. Maybe this is the first time some people have ever, ever actually been forced to stay home for long periods and are learning how to cook and save money. I'm hoping we come out of this as a you know, resilient you know, nation of people that are hardworking savers that have learned new skills? Or am I just being too naive, everyone? What would you do? You know, if you're stuck at home, you can't find work, or there's you know, nothing around, what suggestions would you give people in the comments of how to improve themselves? One thing, if you're here in Brisbane, guys, there's lynda.com.au, this online research of a resource. It's called LinkedIn Learning right now. LinkedIn Learning, we'll bring it up here. You've got courses, and this is hashtag not sponsored, everyone. But you've got courses for a whole range of different things. If you're in Brisbane, you can get access to this via the State Library as a resident for free. All of their courses. And you get little certificates you can put on your LinkedIn thing. One thing we asked people to do when you know, they were applying for a job with us was to do the Rivet course here. Rivet is a 3D software package that we use for our architectural drafting, modeling, and rendering. And we got them to do this. Because, of course, you don't learn anything useful at university. And it was great. So I, if I was, you know, unemployed, no options at the moment, but stuck at home, maybe even on job keeper and not working, I'd be doing this to learn new things. And you can even download it on your phone. When I was driving around, I'd be listening to lectures on different things. It's interesting. That's, that'd be one suggestion I would give. And particularly for people in Brisbane, you can get it for free. For everyone else, it costs money. I don't really know oh there you go 40 bucks a month after a free trial so yeah i think actually i do have oh i used to have an affiliate link for uh linda learning i don't know if it works anymore but let me know guys if you're a fan of linkedin learning now i prefer linda what have you learned on it what have you learned on it i've, I've done it for a lot of uh well for our profession for rivet using advanced things in the software the problem is when you learn how to use a piece of software you get in the habits of just doing things the same way over and over again so every couple of years when they release new versions you want to do the tutorials just go through them all just to get up to speed again anyway everyone let me know your thoughts and opinions where do you think the jobless rate is going to hit and how what's your advice to people who are in that situation think of it as an opportunity to improve to learn something new there's a positive to everything Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. You can support us using Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or via PayPal. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.